Hi, it's Wednesday, May 27th. I hope your day is going great. Uh, it feels like uh, we've been staying at home now uh, forever and ever, uh, and we all feel the same way. And I just have been praying um, that you are being increasingly and ever sensitive to the person of God because it's when we're tired, it's when we're lonely, and when things are dark that the voices of temptation are the loudest. And I've been uh, struggling with yesterday morning's morning prayer gospel. If you've been logging in on Facebook every morning, you would have heard this. But this vo verse, these two verses have been going over and over and over in my head, and I don't know why. From the uh, eighth chapter of Matthew's gospel, uh, Matthew records this. Now, when Jesus saw great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe then approached him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. I think the reason these verses have uh, been haunting me is because uh, in our current cultural environment, we have a number of voices that are screaming at us uh, and encouraging us um, and discouraging us in many, many ways. Uh, and as much as we may be enthusiastically wanting to say, yes, I want to follow Jesus. Yes, I want to be faithful. Yes, I, I want to have my life in line with his purposes. Oftentimes, there are other variables in our life that will distract us. Oh, I, let me go first bury my dead father. Something that seems to be urgent, but the urgent should never drive us from the important. And that's precisely what Jesus was saying in this text. Um, the important thing is, is to follow him. The urgent often trumps that. Uh, the other person that was referred to in this narrative was the, was the man who wanted to follow Jesus wherever he would go, and he said that enthusiastically, but then he found out that Jesus didn't have a place to go. Foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. So it's not going to be comfortable when we follow Jesus. It's not going to be um, uh, easy, but he will give us the grace. One of the reasons that these verses were haunting me so much is because they precede that great calming of the storm narrative. It was the very next verses of this text that Jesus gets into a boat with the disciples, falls asleep, and the storm begins to, to incite fear in the hearts of every one of his disciples. And he stop, and he stands up, he wakes up in the middle of the boat, and he calms the storm. I think it's important for us to understand the flow of these two narratives. Firstly, we're called to follow Jesus. The most important thing and decision you'll ever make in your life. It might not be the most urgent, but it is the most important. And then we live in the confidence that when we follow him, even though there might not be a place to lay our head, even though it may compromise the safety and secure issues, and the comfortable issues that life normally has to offer us, even though it means putting our family and the needs of our families, not our immediate nuclear family, but our extended families, as, as, secondly, as, as a second importance to following Jesus, even though all of those things, we can have the confidence that when we're following him, when we're in the boat with him, he's going to be the master of the storms. Not always stops the storms, but he's going to be there with us. Do you know about this very time and during this pandemic, we see evidence all around the world of people who are setting the important aside because they're being driven by the urgent. And I would invite you today to take some time to reflect on what is really important and what are the urgent things that are pushing aside the important. Because the important should never be compromised by the urgent. Decades ago, a man wrote a book called The Tyranny of the Urgent. And the implication was, is that the voices of our culture, 
the voices of our family and friends often create an urgency that demands we make a decision that prevents us from taking time to evaluate how where that urgent need is in the priority of the important. In this point in our lives, it's vital for us to be seeking to follow Jesus, listening carefully to the voice of our Father who knows what's best for us, who knows what's best for our country, who knows what's best for our family. So please, please don't let the urgent drown out the voice of the God who is most important. Be blessed today. Know we're praying for you. If there's anything we can do, please text us, email us, or phone us. Uh, we're there to try to help you through this. Be blessed. Bye for now.